The NFL Draft is slowly but surely approaching April 28th through April 30th. And today, we've got a mock draft plan for you guys here on this brand new episode of Time to Football. Hello, everyone. Thank you guys so much for joining us. My name is Hassan Khan, the host of this channel that we like to call Time to Football. Glad you guys are able to join us for this amazing, beautiful, wonderful mock draft that we have planned for you guys. Listen, the thing with mock drafts is... Uh, we put in hours and hours and hours of research to study all these college prospects. We don't look at anybody else's mock draft and then just base all this information and just regurgitate it towards you guys. No, we don't do that. We actually study all the players. I put in about uh, 25 hours in the last last day, I would say. Um, so I'm excited to get this going and get you guys all this information with our mock draft. But we're not doing this solo. We've got our draft analyst that's been joining us for the uh, past few years here on Time to Football, Michael Watson. Mikey, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me on, Hassan. You know, uh, I'm looking forward to uh, getting my name out there with the Mel Kuypers, Todd McShays, um, you know, bring in some good insight and, you know, hopefully uh, get this mock draft perfect with you. So, yeah, no pressure. No, no pressure at all. Actually, as a matter of fact, uh, speaking of, you know, the top names out there like Mel Kuyper and Taj, they have nothing compared to to you. Like Daniel Jeremiah, who's he? He's quaking in his boots, right? Uh, so I actually wanted to recap everything because you join us for a mock draft every year. One, two, three, four, five players correct. Can you name those five players that we called correctly last year in the first round? Uh, Trevor Lawrence. Correct. Uh, I would not assume Justin Fields with the trade. Nope. Uh, um. Oh, Zach Wilson. Yeah. Um, and then the Falcons. We got the Falcons right. We got the Falcons right. We got Kyle Pitts correct. Um, okay. And then actually, it was between Panay Sewell and Jamar Chase, but we actually called Jamar Chase for the Cincinnati Bengals last year. And then I think the pick that a lot of people, probably ninety nine percent of people, expected for the Pittsburgh Steelers, Najee Harris, uh, was drafted. We called them correctly right. as well. So yeah. uh, I am excited for this mock draft because, like you said, we are going to be one hundred percent accurate with this uh there's no way no how that we can be inaccurate with this uh which i want to give you guys a preface like we're just having fun with this we're just giving you our insights we're just giving you what we think realistically could happen uh this more than likely it's not going to be 100 accurate it's not going to we know that for sure uh so don't get upset at anything it's just an opinion that's it you can't get wrong or can't get mad at something that hasn't happened yet. Like that's just, just want to preface that. So with that said, what we're going to do is we're going to go back and forth uh, between me and Mikey. And uh, let me go ahead and take the odd numbers and then you can have the evens. How's that sound? Okay. That sounds good. Sounds good to me. All right. So let's go ahead and get started with the most accurate mock draft you've ever seen in the world based off of two guys that study college football like no other. Bucky Brooks, who's that guy? Daniel Jeremiah, scrub. All right. Now, with the first pick, I'm going to go ahead and say that the Jacksonville Jaguars select Aiden Hutchinson, edge rusher from Michigan. I think this is pretty self-explanatory. I know that some mock drafts out there might have like Evan Neal, but I think that the the uh, Jaguars have been going so offensive heavy in free agency. They haven't really adjusted the defensive end position. I say Aiden Hutchinson, Mikey your thoughts? Yeah, I think it's a safe bet. I mean, he, he was probably the most dominant pass rusher. Jacksonville needs a pass rush, and they obviously need offensive line too. Uh, so I don't think Evan Neal would be out of the ordinary. Um, but, you know, edge rushers come at a prime rate. Like, they don't come very often. So to get an elite guy – I don't know if Aiden Hutchinson is elite, but he he's he's good. You're gonna get some production out of him. I don't know if he's gonna be a twenty sack guy. Um, you know, I mean, out out of, out of the pass rushers, I think he's the safest bet. Uh, so I think it's a safe pick for Jacksonville, and you know, hopefully he he lives up to Pro Bowl status for them. Uh, so the number two pick, we alternate. Mikey, who do you have the Lions taking? Yeah, so the Lions, I, I've seen a lot of speculation that Trayvon Walker is just climbing up the ladder. And most mock drafts that I've looked at 
have had Trayvon Walker there, in my opinion, it would be stupid. Not that Trayvon's a bad player. He's very versatile, and you know, we can talk more about that when one of us selects him. Uh, but I just think Kayvon uh, Thibodeau is, I think, in my opinion, I think he's the best pass rusher in this class. Um, I just see more of a ceiling with Kayvon than I do with Aiden. Um, you know, he's a long, athletic dude, and he put up numbers. If you if you looked at his numbers, I mean, he I think he was leading the nation in sacks uh, before he kind of got hurt. So he's my guy. Uh, Detroit needs a defensive playmaker so badly. Not to say they don't need offensive, but I think they can address that later in the draft. Wow, this is the first. Uh, I didn't expect us to get so mixed up early on because uh, this is going to F up my mock draft that I have. Uh, but hey, we're going with the flow. We're going with the flow uh, because I had Kyle Hamilton and I and I struggled. I struggled with this. I, I'll be honest with you. Like I didn't know if the Lions, like I, I saw Trayvon Walker as well, and then I saw I was thinking Kayvon Thibodeau, but then like for some reason people keep on like dropping him down on the boards. But uh, so I thought, okay, Kyle Hamilton is the safest choice. But uh, yeah. no. it's funny you mentioned that. I had I had uh Kyle Hamilton as my second choice there not Trayvon I had Kyle there uh my problem with this one was I can't recall the last time I saw a safety go top five let alone top 10 right uh I mean Kyle Hamilton yeah that dude's a baller he's a freak athlete uh oh yeah so I, I just had a hard time selecting Kyle Hamilton at number two with some pass rushers there yeah I no, I definitely get your logic and I get the uh, theory behind that well, then, in that case, I mean, it is down to number three. It's down to the Houston Texans. Uh, so here's the thing. Now, I'm struggling with this because I had the Texans picking Iki Iquanu, um at number three, but with Kyle Hamilton still on the board, and they need help everywhere, everywhere. And the safety position is not as deep, I would say, as like maybe offensive lineman, offensive tackle. So I think that they can wait to like maybe number 13 to pick an offensive tackle if they need to. So with Kyle Hamilton still there, I'm going to go ahead and say that they're picking Kyle Hamilton. And again, it's like he's the safest choice in this draft. I feel like, and I know that like picking a safety top five is not ideal. It's out of the norm, but I think that the Texans landing their playmaker safety can really make a difference for that defense. Yeah, that's interesting. I actually love the pick. Um, I thought you made a good point of, you know, offensive linemen being there later in the draft. My issue is, you know, the Texans have had good safeties the past few years. It hasn't made a difference. I just look at their sack numbers, how many times Deshaun got beat up. You know, they're they're putting all their marbles into Davis Mills this year. You got to protect him to even give him a shot at the job, in my opinion. You know, you have Laramie Tunsil on one side, I think, Evan Neal would have been my choice there. Um, but even uh, the tackle out of NC State would have been a good pick. I mean, he, he's a versatile guy that can move to the inside. Could be a run blocker. But for me, I'm looking for the best pass blocker here. With that trade with Deshaun Watson, getting the number 13th pick now, you know, I, I, I think, fingers crossed, maybe like someone like Charles Cross could like fall to them and, and still be available. Maybe even Trevor Penning. Uh, for them to grab uh, later on. I know you pass up on Evan Neal, but you, know, you get defensive help, uh, fill that void of Justin Reed leaving, and then uh, maybe that, that'll that make a difference. But your pick, the New York Jets. Yeah, oh, man. I, I feel like I'm wanting to stray away from what I have right now. Um, but I've been trying to think, like, the Jets, like, what have they done in the past, like, five, ten years in the draft, I feel like they've draft, drafted a lot of defensive linemen and their defense has never really been stellar. Um, so I have Trayvon Walker written down. Hmm. Part of me wants to switch that to Derek Stingley. Oh, ho, ho, ho. which would be high for this mock draft. I'm really struggling here. Hmm. You know, safe pick probably would be Trayvon Walker, but. I think their best pick would be Stingley, but I'll stick with Trayvon Walker. Um, okay. I know we're trying to get this as accurate as possible, um, but I wouldn't be surprised if they took, you know, even um, 
Ahmad Gardner here. Yes, I had uh, the Jets taking Ahmad Gardner uh, at number four because of uh, the Jets and the Giants are both in love with uh, Gardner. And given that the Giants pick next at number five, they want to beat them to it. So they snag uh, Ahmad Gardner uh, because they do need some corner help. But like you said, Trayvon Walker, uh, it's a safe choice. And it it could be something that teams legitimately could do. But Trayvon, I I mean, I feel like he is Rashawn Gary 2.0. You know, he tested out of the world at the combine. 40 was crazy. Vertical was crazy. If you watch him play, I mean, he can do a lot of things. He can cover. I've seen him covering running backs, tight ends, receivers, chasing down the quarterback, getting after the quarterback. He can do a lot of things. You know, as, as a true freshman at Georgia, you know, he was listed as like interior defensive lineman. And on opening kickoff, you see him on kickoff coverage running down the field. How often do you see interior lineman? I mean, Granted, now he's kind of like an edge guy, um, but still, like as a true freshman, I was like, that dude is a freak. And I heard today that actually he has uh, visits with all the top six teams that are picking in the top six. So, uh, you know, yeah. Trayvon Walker could be drafted inside of the top six. Um, all right, well, now to number five for the New York Giants. Now, it is rumored that the Giants are in love with Ahmad Gardner. And I had the Giants taking Evan Neal initially, but with Ahmad Gardner still available on the board. You know what? I'm going to say Evan Neal. They love Ahmad Gardner, and I think that they're confident that they can get him at number seven. But, like, if they pass up on an offensive tackle, one of the best offensive tackle in this draft, and the Panthers could pick one. Yeah, I'm actually curious on your opinion. Like, do you think Evan Neal is the best tackle in this draft? I know you mentioned the NC State tackle earlier. Um, yeah, it's it's so what what I did is I don't watch a lot of college football. So what I did is I took the major draft analysts. I took Todd McShay, uh, Mel Kiper, Daniel Jeremiah, Bucket Books, all that, all those guys. And I just saw where their rankings are. And I just kind of took an average rank for all these players yeah. and just barely like a small margin had Evan Neal ranking ahead of Iki Iquanu. But yeah. like. I, I have seen many mock drafts where Iquanu is the first offensive tackle. So if the Giants p- pick Iquanu with this pick, I would not be surprised. But, I mean, for, just from what I've seen from the rankings, Evan Neal just by an edge beats him. That's kind of where I'm at. I think Evan Neal is the best tackle in the draft. Um, the Giants have needed – they've probably had the worst offensive line for the past, like, seven years. I mean, like – you go back to like Eli Manning days. I mean, it's, it's like four times a game. Yeah. Uh, and so, I mean, they, they need a tackle help. They need interior help. Um, so, uh, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if they either went Neil or um, Iquanu there. I think either one would work. Yeah. And now the Panthers, who are also in need of an offensive tackle, what do you say? Do you think that they go with an offensive tackle or who's your pick? This one I'm kind of torn on as well. And I think, you know, since Iquanu's kind of fallen, I'm leaning toward him here. I I did have Malik Willis here. Oh, I'll be honest. Oh, yeah. Oh um, my gosh. Yeah, I saw I saw one throw really stood out to me, uh, in the I don't remember if it was pro day or combine, but he just launched it down the field like so effortlessly. Um, I didn't watch a lot of Liberty football games. So <laughs> there's a, a big difference between, you know, throwing with no one on the field and then throwing with the full team coming at you. So I'm going to go with Iquanu here um, and get them some much needed help. And, you know, he's a guy that can, um, I know most people are projecting him as a tackle. I kind of want to see him play guard. I mean, he's a nasty run blocker, the best run blocker by a mile in this class. Um, just a nasty dude. Uh, so I think he could really help, you know, McCaffrey probably wouldn't mind running behind him. Yeah. If uh, (laughs) McCaffrey could stay healthy for sure. I think, uh, Iquanu would be definitely a a huge asset to him. Um, and yeah, I mean, originally I had Iquanu and Evan Neal gone by this point. So I had Charles cross, uh, going to the Panthers. So the fact that an offensive tackle is taken, like, I am not upset with that. That I think that's good. Um, 
And now at number seven, in my mock draft, I had a trade happen. I had the Ravens actually trading up uh, with the New York Giants uh, to to move up to number seven because in my draft, Trayvon Walker fell. And I think that they really need some help at defense. Um, but at number seven, the Giants stay put. I think they get calls from the Ravens saying like, hey, can we trade up and maybe get like Ahmad Garner because their secondary was – Atrocious for the Ravens, but I think the Giants just stay put because it's a rumor that they want offensive tackle and cornerback with the first round picks. I think that they stick with Ahmad Garner uh, here, and I think that they get their lockdown corner. Uh, big, tall. Uh, one of the main reasons why Cincinnati was advancing to the Final Four last year, uh, Gardner would be a huge asset to the New York Giants. Yeah, Gardner, he's a stud too. I mean, I think I think I saw a stat where like he didn't let up a touchdown in his like whole college career, which is that's mind-blowing. crazy. And like I don't know like what you know measures that like if there's a blown coverage or safety up or top. I mean I'm not gonna get into all that, but just to even like <laughs> if if even a half of that is true, I mean you know you're getting a guy that can shut down half the field, so and you know follow the top receivers um, around the league, so. Uh, it, it's a it's a good pick. I think that's a safe bet. They need some secondary help. Um, I had them taking uh, Jermaine Johnson right here, okay. as you mentioned. You know, you 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 had the Ravens trading up for Trayvon Walker, but I think the Giants need some edge help here. Um, you know, they lost Lorenzo Carter. Not that he was like a massive guy that's producing, you know, fifteen sacks a, a season. Um, but I think Jermaine Johnson. I mean, he. He's a project player, and I don't know. I, th- I think he'd been a good guy to come off the edge for him. Yeah, uh, Lorenzo Carter actually did not work out with the New York Giants, and now with our beloved Atlanta Falcons. And speaking <laughs> of the Atlanta Falcons, at number eight, this team needs a lot of help everywhere. What do they do with the number eight pick? Yeah, I mean, gosh, there's about ten guys I can name right here. <laughs> <laughs> for the Falcons, I mean, you look, I mean, they lost Matty Ice. Is Mario the guy? Probably not. Are they looking at Malik Willis? I think they check in with him. I don't think they select him here. You know, Calvin Ridley suspended. They could use a receiver. Um, but I'm going to go with the guy I just mentioned, Jermaine Johnson. I think uh, pass rush has been – the Falcons' main problem for the past few years. They really have not had a dominant guy there since, gosh, I can't even name. Uh, <laughs> Vic Beasley Abraham. that one year. <laughs> yeah, Vic Beasley one year. So I'll go with Jermaine Johnson, you know, and even if he doesn't produce getting sacks, he's an amazing run defender. So you have a guy that can um, lock down the edges, not let those – backs get to the outside or you know Debo Samuel on a sweep or anything like that you know he's a guy that can cover that so I like that pick for the Falcons I think it's a solid pick um and you know I think they hope for about 10 sacks next year out of them Uh, I mean I wouldn't be upset if that was who they got Uh, so maybe Jermaine Johnson could be the guy I in my draft I had him taking Garrett Wilson being the first receiver off the board. Uh, but again, like that might be jumping the gun just a bit, just because Calvin really has just gone for one year. And then hopefully you get him back if he doesn't want to get traded somewhere else. Uh, but we'll see. Um, so yeah, Jermaine Johnson is your pick for the Falcons. My hope before free agency happened was that Derek Stingley would fall to the Falcons. And he very well might be there. But I think after you signed Casey Hayward, that that's probably a sign that they're not going to go corner, especially with AJ Terrell on the other side. So that's why I went defensive end or edge outside linebacker. Yeah. I like it a lot. Um, so here's a thing. Now I'm just kind of confused with the number nine pick. Uh, cause in my draft, I had cave on Thibodeau falling to the Seattle Seahawks. Okay. Well, if Thibodeau isn't there, maybe take the best edge rusher after that, which is Jermaine Johnson up. Oh. He's not there. Just got taken by the Atlanta Falcons. What do the Seattle Seahawks do at this point? I'm leaning towards two people right now. I'm leaning towards Charles Cross being the next offensive tackle taking uh, off the board or Derek Stingley. 
<sighs> this I is... had one of those guys listed as my pick for them. Really? So I'll let you do. <laughs> yeah, I'll let you. Let's we'll see if we match up here. Oh man. Okay. Um, <laughs> this is going to be disappointing for you, but I'm going to say they play it safe and take Charles Cross. Oh no. <laughs> I I know you really wanted Derek Stingley here, but I I mean I I think at this point uh, Pete Carroll during the uh, league meeting. Uh, with the owners and the coaches, he was just gushing about Drew Locke. And I'm not saying that he's going to be the, the quarterback. I don't like Baker Mayfield is still out there. Jimmy Garoppolo, like they could draft someone. But I think if, you know, crap, hits the fan. Worst case scenario, you got to roll, roll with Drew Locke. You, okay, well, you got to get him some help. And, and that starts with the offensive line, starts up front in the trenches. And I think Charles Cross, it's not the sexiest pick, I understand. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to go with Charles Cross here. I, I'm just thinking realistically what John Schneider might do, the general manager. Your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, for Seahawks fans, this probably isn't the name you want to hear. And as a Packers fan, over the years when they've gone offensive tackle, offensive guard, center, I feel every bit of pain in that name, Charles Cross. So I feel for you. Um, but I also look at the Packers offensive line over the years and – I mean, it's truly been one of the best. They've built depth. Um, and, you know, I think that, like you said, like the game is won between the trenches. So it's a safe pick for them. Um, I'm sure everyone's just like closing their eyes, just hoping for LSU cornerback Derek Sting. Malik Willis. <laughs> yeah, that, I'm sure that would make them even more happy. So, um, yeah, like you said, safe pick. All right, well, hey, the floor is yours now. With Derek Stingley still up on the board, the number 10 pick, the New York Jets, I mean, it's not the sexiest team in the world, but could the Jets draft him? Yeah, it's funny. Um, I have written down two names. They play the same position. But with Stingley falling, which I didn't expect him to, and I still don't think he'll get out of the top 10, but if he's there at 10, I am taking Derek Stingley. For the Jets. The other two names I had were Garrett Wilson and Chris Olave. Oh wow. They need some they need some receiving help. Yeah. So Derek Stingley is, is your pick. I, I love it. Freshman year, like so freaking good. And like when he goes into the NFL draft, he could be like a number one overall pick for a corner, which is a, almost unheard of, but that's how good he is. And then like you know, kind of inconsistent the years after that. But uh, I mean if the Jets are facing now the fact that you lost out on a mod gardener. Don't get the sauce at corner. You get Derek Stingley. I don't think that they'd be upset about that. So I, I, I really do like the pick uh, for the Jets at number 10. All right, now number 11, he, the Commanders, man. We were talking about how Garrett Wilson could be an Atlanta Falcon. And the overall consensus that I saw from the mock drafts, or from the rankings at least from the draft analysts, was that Garrett Wilson was the number one ranked wide receiver in this class. I'm going to say to to pair up with Scary Terry, which they might have some contract disputes coming up later on in the future, and you don't know how the uh, receiving core is going to look like. I think they want to get this offense in check and draft Garrett Wilson. Yeah, I mean, I could definitely see that. I had his name written down as a possibility as well as uh, Trent McDuffie. Uh, I think if they don't address wide receiver with this pick, then I don't see – them going outside of um, a pick outside of secondary help, whether that's a safety or a corner. Um, Kyle Hamilton won't be there. Stingley probably – he may be there. Um, Gardner may be there. Doubtful on both of those names. So, uh, yeah, if they don't address receiver, I I'd ex- wouldn't be surprised to see Trent McDuffie's name there. Yeah, Trent McDuffie was also another guy that I uh, mm-hmm. considered as well. Uh, so now the Minnesota Vikings, new head coach and Kevin O'Connell, what do they do with their first pick in that new regime at number 12? Yeah, so a guy we just mentioned, Trent McDuffie, um, that's ultimately who I think that they're going to pick. Um, but I could also see a Devontae Wyatt going here, um, which could be fairly high for him. But you, if you look at the uh, interior defensive line, there aren't a lot of guys outside of you know, him and Jordan Davis. I, mean, I won't go into it, Devontae Wyatt, but Trent McDuffie, I mean, it gives you – you can put him on opposite side of Patrick Peterson, a young guy, 
a veteran to learn from with Peterson there. So um, Devontae Adams is no longer in the division, so maybe they don't go this route. Maybe they go with a defensive lineman like Wyatt, Jordan Davis. I don't really see him fitting into their scheme, but I think Wyatt would be a good pick here also. Number 13, the Texans acquired this pick from the Cleveland Browns from the Deshaun Watson trade. I had Jordan Davis being drafted by the Houston Texans as the first defensive tackle. However, with the Texans missing out on an offensive tackle with a number three pick, and we said that they picked Kyle Hamilton, are they really going to go defense-defense with their first two picks, which is not bad. Like, it's okay. They're two great picks in Davis and Hamilton. I do think that they want to boost up that offensive line, especially at tackle. I'm leaning towards Trevor Penning being the pick here for the Houston Texans. Uh, I, I see a lot of mock drafts out there, like Trevor Penning being drafted like around the 15 to 20 range. So maybe 13 might be a little bit high up. And, and like you said, it looks like they're going all in at Davis Mills, which towards the end of the season was not that bad at all. You know, you have your offensive line help and helping out Davis Mills. Then you help out your defense with Kyle Hamilton. That's, that's my take on that. I'm having a hard time seeing a tackle there, especially pinning. Um, I There's been a lot of talk about Brandon Cooks maybe being on the move, maybe to Green Bay, some other teams involved there. Um, and ultimately, I think that does happen. If you look at his <laughs> – if you look at Brandon Cooks' teams, the man gets traded every year. So it's bound to happen. So I actually had them taking a receiver there. I had them taking uh, a bigger receiver, Drake London. Um, okay. so I, even if cooks was there, I would take Drake London. He's a big receiver, kind of opposite of Brandon cooks. They bring two different things, uh, to the team. So I, if I was a Texans fans, I would love Drake London as my pick. Like I said, uh, offensive tackle is probably not the position. A lot of fans want to hear, but uh, it's also a very safe choice. But now you have the Baltimore Ravens at number 14. What do you think that they're, they're going to do? Are they going to address their atrocious defense? I, I do have them sucking a defensive player. I think it'll shock some people. Um, but what I found very interesting last week was they were after Bobby Wagner. And I couldn't really wrap my mind around like why they were doing that, and I still don't. But they were very involved there. I mean, they have Patrick Queen, um, a young guy out of Oklahoma. Um, and so I, I was just thinking along the lines, if they're wanting Bobby so bad, then I wouldn't be surprised if they picked Devin Lloyd here, who's the top-ranked inside linebacker out of Utah. I mean, he, I don't know if you put him and have him calling the plays on defense, but he's a guy that can do a lot. He can – cover multiple positions. He can blitz. He can cover. Uh, he can hit like a Mack truck. Like, I don't know. I, I don't really know why they were after Bobby Wagner, but that was my rational um, in picking Devin Lloyd here. No, I mean, that's that's smart. Like, you're using context clues on, like, you know, who they pursued in pre free agency and, uh, you know, uh, Devin Lloyd being the best linebacker. Just name your kid Devin if you want them to be a linebacker in the NFL. Devin Bush, <laughs> Devin White. Like, these guys are, are legit. So, Devin Lloyd from Utah. Um, I like that as well. I think I had Devin Lloyd in my mock draft falling. Um, I think the Patriots picked him uh, because they lost a lot of linebackers. But Devin Lloyd, like, to the Ravens, again, I, I, I think that's, that's pretty good. You know, you need help everywhere on that defense, especially the secondary. But, you know, in the linebacking position, I think that really helps out the Ravens. Um, all right, so now we have the number 15 pick. And Mikey, you as a Packers fan, you see that Devontae Adams is not available on your team anymore. Now, the Packers, they have two first round picks number 22 pick and then number 28 pick. But I'm going to say that the Packers and the Eagles trade. So the Packers trade their 22nd and their 28th pick to move on up with the Eagles and get their 15th pick. In my initial mock draft with London gone, I had them trading up for Jamison Williams because he's on track to recover from his ACL injury by training camp. But I'm going to say Drake London is a pick by the Packers. I'm torn here. I think they will stay put at 22 and 28. I think they'll 
uh, select the offensive lineman, and I think they will take a wide receiver. I think who they take at receiver depends on who they sign in free agency, if anyone. I mean, you look at guys available, you got Jarvis, uh, Will Fuller's available, you know, trade talks with Brandon Cooks. And so if it's a Fuller or a Cooks guy that you acquire, then I have no problem taking Drake London. You know, I think he has a very similar play style to Devontae Adams, actually. Um, you know, they have similar builds. I mean, Drake London's a, a big receiver. Um, he's not the fastest guy, but if you watch his film, <laughs> that dude gets open. And same thing with Devontae Adams. I mean, he's not running by you. He's just creating space with his footwork. But you mentioned Jamison Williams. And so, you know, my initial thought for the backers, I was like, I hope Drake London falls to the backers. But then, you know, I see Jamison Williams running and doing these football drills, and I'm like, hold up, wait a minute. Put, put that number one on the Packers. So you're playing to win now, so I would not be surprised to see the Packers move up. They have shown to move up in the past couple of years with – uh, new GM Brian Gutekus. So it wouldn't be, it wouldn't surprise me at all if they moved up here. And if they take Drake London, I'm not that mad. Not yeah. mad at all. And again, like Drake London, Jameson Williams. So pretty much my thinking behind it is you trade Devontae Adams at the end of the day. If they do this trade with the Eagles, you trade J- Devontae Adams for Drake London and a second round pick. Packers trade up, see Drake London fall. Uh, want to get him outside or just inside of the top 15. Uh, now, at number 16, a, a trade happened uh, where the Saints and the Eagles, you know, we have their opinion on, like, what the Saints are doing. They're in win-now mode, trading a first-round pick next year, whatever. At this point, they have two first-round picks. And, uh, Mikey, you have the honor of selecting the Saints' first pick here at number 16. Who are they picking? Yeah, let me just first – start off by saying, I don't understand what the hell they're doing. You know, they're in win now mode. Your quarterback is coming off an ACL. Your backup quarterback is listed as a tight end. You have a new coach. I mean, it, it, I don't understand what they're doing here. Maybe I'll understand next year. Um, people are, if they make the playoffs, it's not because that the Saints were good. It's because the NFC is weak. So let me start off by saying that. Um, what I have them doing here, you know, I think it's either wide receiver or defensive line. You know, Wyatt is still here on board, so I'm going to go with Devontae Wyatt. You know, we've talked about his pass rushing abilities, his run blocking. He's fast as heck. He has a great personality. Uh, would be a perfect fit for New Orleans, in my opinion. Yeah, the Saints, um, I think the two major positions – if they really want to be like a playoff contending team, uh, wide receiver, offensive line, uh, I, I would say those are the two biggest needs. But, you know, they might have some faith in Michael Thomas and Jameis Winston they resigned, And, uh, yeah, I, I, I like the pick of, of Devontae Wyatt. I really do. Uh, all right. Do so- you see the Saints picking a, a quarterback with one of their two picks? Well, I know you're coming up on 19, so I don't want to blow it, but. Ah, uh, <laughs> we'll save it. We'll save it. We Jumping the gun here. We shall see. Um, but let's not jump the gun. All right, now we've got uh, number 17. Okay, I struggled with this for the Chargers. They went defensive heavy in free agency, and it was fantastic. Like J.C. Jackson, Sebastian Joseph Day, like all these good guys that they signed. Khalil Mack. <laughs> Khalil Mack as well. Like trade like they are so loaded on defense. And now, according to reports, like they're very interested in Jordan Davis. I originally had them picking Kenyon Green, the guard from Texas AM. And I know that's a little bit of a stretch, but there's like no better like offensive lineman out there than Kenyon Green. Like they don't have a second round pick. The Chargers don't. So like, you know, the odds of you getting a good offensive tackle and the second round, it's not going to happen. But because of the rumors are saying that they're interested in Jordan Davis, I'm going to go with the reports, and I'm going to say that they pick Jordan Davis and just keep on boosting up that defense, make themselves a Super Bowl contender. Yeah, I mean, there's been a lot of smoke around Jordan Davis and the Chargers. 
for months now. I had Jordan Davis going here. I don't know if he falls this far after his combine. Um, but, you know, I look at what Tampa Bay did, um, where, where they boosted their defensive line, their linebackers. You know, they got Kenneth Murray, which I don't think anyone expected him to play as well as he did last year. Uh, unreal. Um, and so, like, I, I looked at it two ways. So I had Jordan Davis and I had N'Kobe Dean here. Mm. Um because I was kind of trying to think like Levante, David, Devin White combo and like how dominant they were. But then I also looked what was in front of them to allow them to be dominant. dominant. And you had Nadamakon Ksu and Vita Vea. The Chargers don't have that guy. I mean, you put Bosa on one end, you put Khalil Mack on the other end, and you just throw Jordan Davis in the middle. And you let Kenneth Murray and it doesn't even matter who the other linebacker is. You just let them run. And I mean, Jordan Davis is going to get double teamed, triple teamed almost every play he's in. He's just a monster. I love the pick for them. Um, yeah, that defense is just going to get better with Jordan Davis. Uh, now the Eagles, <laughs> who traded with the Saints for this number 18 pick, who do you got the Eagles take? Like, you look back like a year ago, two years ago. I'm a guy that always looks at mock drafts two years before. Uh, I like comparing just like how players develop in so, college. So you're probably big on Spencer Rattler. Is that what I'm hearing? Oh, yeah. First round pick for sure next year. Um, so I, ha- I have the Eagles taken. Um, I-, I cannot say his name right, so you might need to help me here. George Karlofitis. Yeah, I I, uh, <laughs> I struggled with that name too, but uh Okay. Edge, edge yeah, I think they addressed the defensive line here. Um, and, you know, you had them trading with the Packers. So, I mean, they're not really moving back, and I had them taking him at 15 originally. So, he's going to get sacks. I How many? I can't tell you. Okay, well, now at number 19, we talked about the Saints potentially needing a quarterback. No quarterbacks have been taken just yet. But here's the thing that I'm struggling with. Chris Olave, Jamison Williams are still available at wide receiver, and they've been talking about how they need wide receiver help to be a contender. I think the Jameis Winston experiment, I think people look at his stats and they're like, oh my gosh, Jameis Winston is such a good quarterback for the Saints. Like, re-sign him to a two-year, $28 million deal. Sure, like, he's good enough. And they look at the 14 touchdowns and three interceptions that he threw, but like, one of those games is a five-touchdown game against the Packers. Like, you know, the Stats could be misleading. And if you actually watch Jameis Winston play, I don't think anything really stuck out that he's going to be the quarterback of the future. He's just more so like a one-year, two-year kind of guy. So I'm going to go ahead and say that the Saints take the first quarterback off the board, and it's Kenny Pickett is ranked as the number one quarterback for a lot of people. Despite the small hand size, which is like the biggest concern, I'm going to say Kenny Pickett is drafted by the New Orleans Saints to be the quarterback of the future. Them moving Taysom Hill to tight end, like, officially makes me think that they are going to draft a quarterback here. Um, you know, Jameis hasn't proven to be a healthy quarterback. So I think you you draft a quarterback here, and if Jameis doesn't work out or if he gets hurt, you can plug a guy in and see what he has, whether that's Malik Willis or Kenny Pickett. Uh, oh, part of me is leaning Pickett, um, you know, given, given what – the Saints have had, um, but the way the NFL is shifting and moving to dual threat or a mobile quarterback, they might take Malik Willis. Now number 20, the Steelers have been tied to another quarterback. Could they go with the second best quarterback available? Yeah, and I, I'm, I'm going to take you up on the offer. I'm going to say Malik Willis here. Uh, I think he's a guy that can develop under Mike Tomlin. Um Thumb is not going to put a ton of pressure on you as much as he is of a hard ass coach. Um, I, I think he really connects with his players. His players love playing for him. And I think Malik Willis, I mean, he, he can really learn a lot um, from Tomlin and Tomlin will put him in good position to make plays. Uh, so I, they don't really have anyone else there. So I, I think that's a, a solid pick. And the Steelers have been tied to, to Willis for quite some time. Amazing combine performance as well. Uh, okay, well, at number 21, now we have the Patriots. Devin Lloyd was my pick. Um, 
originally, but he is taken off the board. So I'm going to go ahead and say that they're going to draft Nicobe Dean as their linebacker for the Patriots defense. Uh, you know, last year I was I thought they were going to draft Jeremiah Usu Koromoa, but he fell to the second round, passed up on him, ended up taking Mac Jones when he fell. Uh, so I'm going to say that they finally get their linebacker help because they lost Jamie Collins, they lost Dante High- Hightower, they released Kyle Van Noy. Uh, they can draft a wide receiver later if they need wide receiver help, but I think bringing in Devontae Parker uh, through that trade, I think they're fine for, for wide receiver for now. So I think that they address the linebacker position and get Nicobe Dean from Georgia. Yeah, and Nicobe, you know, he's fallen. Honestly, people have been talking about him slipping out of the first round possibly. But if you watch him, he was the anchor of that defense. If you listen to any interview, all the players point to Nicobe. He his IQ is off the charts. He's like like a mechanical or some crazy type of engineer. Um, maybe it's a nuclear engineer or something. I don't know. He's Jeez. smart. Four point Like everyone raves about him. Um, intelligent and you know Bill Belichick loves Georgia players. So like it all checks out. He's always at these Georgia camps. He's always watching these players. He's connected to Kirby. Uh, so I, Nicobe. I, it's my favorite pick so far in this draft. Yeah, Nicobe Dean to the Patriots would definitely, um, you know, I could see some Pro Bowls out of him uh, if he does go into that Patriots defense. Uh, now, <laughs> number 22, I kind of threw you in a in kind of a loop uh, here when I did that trade with the Packers and the Eagles. So now the Eagles have the number 22 pick. Who do the Eagles take here? A lot of receivers haven't been taken. And I think what we'll see in April – or on April 28th, is that receivers are going to fall before the 20th pick. I think at least three or four will be picked. And I still see we have Chris Olave on here, and he has been shooting up the boards. He's been meeting with the Jets, and they have what the number four pick and number 10 pick. So I think we see him around 10 to 15, Olave. Um, if he freaking falls down here and the Eagles can get him, I mean, they'll they'll be drooling if this happens. So uh, I'm going to say Chris Olave. I don't think he falls this far. Um, but that, that's who I'm going to have the Eagles take. Yeah, let's just uh, hope that it's not, not another uh, Jalen Rager and it's a Justin Jefferson pick for the Eagles who passed up on Justin Jefferson to pick Jalen Rager. They don't want to make that mistake again. Pair him up with Devontae Smith. <clears throat> maybe get some production in the passing game out of Jalen Hurts. And you'll be fine. Uh, okay, so now we're at number 23. And we've got the Arizona Cardinals. Now, I had George Carl Loftus being taken out of Purdue because um, they need to replace Chandler Jones. They also need some offensive line help because what the main struggles for the Arizona Cardinals last year was like, is Kyler Murray not really producing? Like he was producing so much like when they were on that 7-0 and streak but they kind of fell off because that offensive line wasn't really getting some help. Uh, I know that they signed Will Hernandez and free agency, and I think they could still use some help at guard and tackle. And I think Zion Johnson was a guy that I was, you know, George Carl Loftus was up there for me as well, but I think uh, taking the tackle or a guard like Johnson, a guy that could play necessarily, he could, he could play both if he needed to. I think Zion Johnson would be a safe choice for the Arizona Cardinals so that Kyler Murray isn't just running for his life like he was in 2021. I think they do one of two things. They either go offensive line like you had it, or they go edge. I think it ultimately comes down to best player available. So whether that's Boy Mafe, Zion Johnson, you know, I think I think we'll be in that realm of tackle or edge. If you're having trouble when your receivers are A.J. Green, Rondell Moore, uh, DeAndre Hopkins, maybe wide receiver isn't the issue. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't think Kyler's the issue. So maybe like we, we came back to offensive line, maybe that's the issue. Get Kyler more comfortable in the pocket. But Honestly, don't even think you can see over the offensive linemen. So I think that's all. I, I legit think that's the reason why he scrambles. Hey, I mean, fair enough. Fair enough. Um, but like speaking of wide receiver, though, I, I know that uh, the next pick, the Dallas Cowboys, for some weird reason, you would think CeeDee Lamb, Michael Gallup, that's okay. That's enough. Wide receiver one, wide receiver two. 
But now there's rumors out there that the Cowboys are interested in drafting a wide receiver. Do you believe that they take a wide receiver here with a number 24 pick? It's so funny you mentioned that. Literally, word for word, you stole everything I was going to say right out of my mouth. I want to address the offensive line here, maybe the defensive line here, just like any rational GM would do. But we have Jerry Jones here, who he cannot have a lineman as a first round pick. He has to do something flashy, something stupid, and he has enough money to where it doesn't matter what he does. Um, so yeah, they could very well take a receiver here, but I'm I'm smarter than Jerry Jones, so I'm going <laughs> with the best offensive lineman available, and I'm taking Bernard Raymond. All right. Well, hey, I like it. I like the safe pick. I know that, uh, <laughs> you know, it, 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 and it's paid off in the past. Like Zach Martin, the guy that he's drafted in the past, and, and you know, when he really wanted to draft Johnny Manziel in that one draft. Yeah, I know Jerry Jones is like, sees, oh, Jameson Williams still available, and he wants to pick him. Um, but I think, yeah, like taking taking the next best offensive lineman, like you're, you got to do that. Like that's, that's smart. But we're not in the minds of Jerry Jones, so we don't know. <laughs> we... We don't know what could happen. Uh, All right. Well, hey, with that said, with it being the number 25 pick, I originally had Brees Hall being taken. And the reason was Sean McDermott has come out recently and said, yeah, I want Josh Allen to run left. Okay, well, to do that, maybe get someone that could develop into a three-down back that you could hand the ball off 20 to 25 times a game. With them releasing Cole Beasley – with Emmanuel Sanders not being there. I mean, if you pair Stephon Diggs, Jamison Williams up, I think that's a lethal, lethal duo for the Buffalo Bills. So I'm going to say that Jamison Williams goes to the Buffalo Bills here at pick 25. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I, I had him sticking with receiver, just a different guy. I had them taking Traylon Burks. You know, he's been compared to Debo Samuel, a guy that can run after the catch. You can twist this two ways. You can say, well, they need a vertical threat, Jameis Williams, to stretch that. Stefan will be running across the middle. Or you can say Traylon Burks, dynamic offense. You can use them multiple ways. Uh, so, I mean, either, either one, either guy would love to see it. All right. Well, now at number 26, who do you have the Tennessee Titans taking? Well, I was really hoping um, Jameson would have fallen to the Packers. Um, <laughs> but we made some trades. We did. We uh, did. So <laughs> the the Tennessee Titans, uh, I think they're kind of in a similar position as the Bills. You know, they brought on Julio. They really thought he'd be a compliment to AJ Brown, Derrick Henry. Really, we didn't get a chance to see it because Julio didn't play at all. So I do want to see a, a legit number two guy there in Tennessee. Uh. So I I have uh, Traylon Burks is available, but I would love to see Christian Watson in that offense. He is a dynamic receiver. Uh, didn't really watch much of him until it, the combine, and he is so fun to watch. I mean, he can run by everyone. Uh, he's a guy you can put on kickoff or punt return. He's just explosive, and I'd love to see him in that offense. I mean, you you run play action, what? every time you throw the ball because you're giving it to Derrick, to Derrick Henry every other play. So that guy's going to be open. If he's not open, A.J. Brown will be. So it's a win-win. Uh, I think he'd be a fun guy to watch in that offense. And let's not forget that they also traded for Robert Woods. So uh, they've got some wide receiver help there, uh, definitely for, for the Tennessee Titans. And definitely, uh, if they have those guys, Christian Watson added in as well, there's no excuse for Ryan Tannehill in that passing offense. Uh, I originally had uh, – so general manager Joe Douglas – is gushing the quote unquote gushing is the word that they used on uh, Traylon Burks. And they have the number three pick and the number six pick in the second round. So two second round picks. I had them trading those two picks to move on up at number 26 so that they can get Traylon Burks at uh, 26. Uh, but Burks is still available on the board now at number 27. Uh, now with them, you know, the Buccaneers could have drafted someone like Traylon Burks to be the wide receiver three, but they signed Russell Gage. So I think they're fine at the wide receiver department for now. Uh, they need defensive tackle, cornerback, edge help. Um, 
you know, guard. Like they lost uh, Ali Marpet. You know, I'm going to say that they go in the direction of cornerback uh, because that secondary has been something that has needed to be addressed for the last two seasons. It's the weakest part and, and the injuries that they've been dealing with in the secondary as well. And someone that I think is the next best cornerback is Andrew Booth, who I'm going to take a moment to say is making history as far as my alma mater of Archer High School being the first player attending that school getting drafted into the NFL. The Clemson cornerback, I like him, and I think that he's going to be a good asset for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Yeah, I think Andrew Booth is actually probably the most underrated player in this draft. Uh, I think if it wasn't for Stingley and Gardner being in this draft, you know, he'd be a guy mentioned in the top 15. And I actually had him going 18 at the Saints. Um, so I do expect him to go first round. I feel like corners fairly weak out of those top three guys. Uh, but Andrew Booth, he's he's legit. Uh, now, again, another <laughs> another uh, tough spot for you that I put you in, the Eagles. Man, you've just been drafting for the Eagles this whole entire time. What do the Eagles do at this point? Because they've already, you know, had it at an edge help at number 18 with George Carl Loftus. At number 22, Chris Olave, they added help on the offense. What do they do? DB written under them as a need. You took Andrew Booth. So I'm going to go next available corner. The next best guy is probably Roger McCrary, which he's a, he's a very solid corner. Um, Daxton Hill is available as well. So I think it comes down to these two guys. And as I'm thinking this through, I'm actually going to go to Roger McCrary. Um, if, if you've watched his film against Alabama and the receivers he went up against, I wouldn't need to see anything else. I mean, he's a sticky guy. He's a physical corner, uh, jam you at the line maybe hold you downfield, but he's probably going to be one of those guys like Carlton Davis that gets away with it. On my initial mock draft for the Eagles, I had them taking Dax Hill. So we're, we're thinking alike, like, you know, being the next best safety available and probably the only first round safeties would be Kyle Hamilton and Dax Hill. All right. And we're now at number 29. Um, now I'm going to say that the chiefs select David Ajabo out of Michigan. At edge, I know the Achilles, we get it. You've all seen the video. But I think the Chiefs are one of those teams where you made it pretty far last year. You made it to the AFC Championship. You can afford to take a little bit more risk in your draft picks and kind of wait it out until he gets fully healthy and he comes back to your lineup. Now, the best thing about this is that the doctors have said his Achilles injury The timetable is mimicking something like Cam Akers, who we all know had this superhuman recovery and was back on the field for the postseason for the L.A. Rams. David Ajabu Ajabu could be available by the time the regular season begins. So I'm going to say that they pick him uh, to help out that edge. Yeah, it's a very unfortunate injury. And, you know, if he doesn't have this, he's 100% first-round pick. Um, So – uh, you know, I was trying to fit him into my my first round, and I was having trouble. I was trying to think of a team that, that like you said, could risk maybe not having him for his first year. Technology and medicine has improved where, like you said, Cam Akers returned in four months. I just don't know if that was just a one-time thing or if that's like the new timetable for Achilles. And how's he going to play? Like, is he going to be the same speed? They really struggled on defense last year. I was leaning towards corner. I was leaning towards safety. Uh, I actually had him taking Daxton Hill uh, to replace a Tyron Matthew. Um, So that's that's, that's where my thought was. But, I mean, I hope for David's sake, I mean, that he is a first-round pick. He deserves it. Just unfortunate injury. Well, the beauty of this is that the Chiefs now have back-to-back picks. So. I mean, the number 30 pick, you talked about Dax Hill. Could that be a yeah. guy that they select? Yeah, that, that's who I'm taking if he's still there at 30. A guy that can, you know, play safety. Uh, he, he's a rangy guy. He's quick, very good in coverage. He can come down, uh, make some tackles. 
you know, Alabama was after them, after him really hard in high school. I think he was actually committed to them and flipped. He had, he had a pretty weird recruitment. So if that says anything about him, that Bama was after him and the safeties they've put in the league, I think Dax can be that next elite safety in the NFL. All right. Well, that covers the Chiefs' back-to-back picks. Now at number 31 with two picks left to go. At, for the Cincinnati Bengals, they need to address that offensive line. It got <laughs> beat up so bad. In the Super Bowl by Aaron Donald. I, I don't I, I struggled with this because when I was looking at this mock draft, I was thinking to myself, like, oh my gosh, this guy's still available on this board for the Bengals. Let me go ahead and pick him for the big ba- no way this guy falls. Like I've seen him getting drafted by like the Minnesota Vikings at number 12. But if he falls and and based off this mock draft that we've been doing, it probably falls in your mock draft too. Tyler Linderbaum from Iowa, the center is still available and I think could be the best available offensive lineman for the Bengals to select. I know that he's a center. I know that they signed Ted Karras, who played for the New England Patriots, but then Karras also played at guard as well for the Patriots. So I think, if anything, you know, worst case scenario, Linderbaum could play center, Karras could shift over to guard, uh, but that would solidify the Bengals in their offensive line. Yeah, I think if anyone watched the Bengals – over last year, that we were all thinking the same thing. How is Joe Burrow going to get through this season healthy? And by whatever miracle there was, he finished the year. I know he kind of got beat up in playoffs. But I'm thinking along the same lines as you. If Linderbaum is there, you take him. Um, but I actually had a guy that not many people have him going in the first round. I've watched a lot of Georgia football. i uh, watched this guy since high school he's probably one of the most dominant offensive linemen at these rivals camps and that's Jamari Sawyer and you know coming out of high school a lot of people had him playing guard and I think that's his natural position is guard or center Um, but he showed how versatile he was playing left tackle for the Georgia Bulldogs in the championship I've heard uh, things about Sawyer that he could uh climb up into ranks maybe it's like early second round or or late first round um but yeah offensive line i think we're on the same page on that like the Bengals, they would love if if any offensive lineman that falls um would be available for them to pick and now to bring it home with number 32 the lions having this pick from the la rams and that matthew stafford trade but who do you have the lions picking at number 32 yeah so the lions i mean they they need help on defense they need an edge guy um, they need a receiver to put um, next to Amon Ross St. Brown. Um, and so I, I went the receiver route on, on paper. I have George Pickens just because I had a bunch of other guys going before. But this guy, Traylon Burks, I don't see him falling out of the first round. Uh, so I, I got to go with Traylon uh, there at 32. He's a guy that deserves to go first round. He put up crazy numbers. I think he'd be a good, a, a nice compliment to a Monroe St. Brown. Yeah, I, I think Traylon Burks would be a good asset for them. Um, they also signed DJ Chark as well to a one-year deal. Um, in my mock draft, I had them picking Quay Walker uh, at linebacker. I think that would help out for the defense as well. Uh, but either way, like the Lions, they do have several positions that they need to address. Uh, all right, well, that concludes our mock draft. Uh, hey, Mikey, I – Really appreciate you joining us for this mock draft. I know that you're usually here in person, but uh, with certain circumstances of you having a little boy here soon at any time, maybe even right now, is she in labor right now? She is not. She is not in labor. Okay. She said, what if I break into, what if my water breaks while y'all are recording? She said, can I come out there? I said, no. You Absolutely not. not. Tough it out. Mock draft comes first, right? Yeah, this is the football comes first. It's a priority. This is the most accurate mock draft that you will ever see ever in your life. So, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, but your wife's going to have to wait. Um, But, you know, yeah, congrats on that. And uh, we'll definitely be staying in touch because we do have our NFL draft live show, the first round, which is going to be April 28th. So make sure you guys that are subscribed to this channel, write that down. We're going live Thursday, 8 p.m. Uh, hopefully we can have Mikey. If he, if we can't, we'll, we'll work around that. Um, 
But uh, thanks again for joining us, being our draft analyst for Time to Football. Um, any last words? Yeah, no, just thanks for having me on as usual. Everyone watching, uh, like, subscribe, comment, give us your thoughts. I mean, uh, I know Hassan loves to interact with you guys and kind of get y'all's opinions too. Uh, we kind of we kind of give our opinions on what we think is best for these teams. So uh, let's hear it from you guys. See what you want your teams to do. This band will make it big one day. Hop on the bandwagon now. You're here to hear f- first, folks. He's been saying that for the last three years, and I'm still in the same spot. But with your help, we can get there. Uh, no, we really appreciate the, all the support that we get. Uh, like you said, subscribe to this channel. Hit that notification uh, icon as well, so you can say notified when we come out with these podcasts every single week. Hey, if you guys missed Shamaria Skillmore, Georgia State offensive lineman, uh, we created a uh, documentary on him, had the chance to interview him, his NFL path to the draft. He's going to get drafted hopefully in the later rounds, but you guys can check out that video. We've also got Virginia safety Joey Blunt that we're going to be interviewing here pretty soon and creating a feature on him as well, so make sure you guys stay tuned for that. With all that said, thank you guys so much for watching this episode, and I'll see you next week. Take care.